So NFL check down game, we will read a question and then provide multiple answers to it, just like a multiple choice test. And then we will select what we feel is the best answer that fits the question. All right, go ahead, JT. So unnecessary. You get it. All right, first one, bigger surprise, Sam Darnold and the Vikings or the no wide receiver Buffalo Bills? Again, this is an easy one. Sam Darnold and the Vikings. Listen, not only not only did they beat the 49ers, and I know the 49ers were like banged up, but no one would have thought that the Vikings were going to be 2 and 0. And then on top of that, when you look at when you look at Darnold's stats, JT at the Giants, 208 yards, two touchdowns versus San Francisco, 268 yards, two touchdowns. They had the 97-yard pass to Justin Jefferson on the 49ers. I mean, it's easy. It's Darnold and the Vikings because you just said it. It's not so much the Bills don't have receivers, but the Bills are playing really good football because of other things. The Vikings, if we thought anything, we thought maybe Darnold would be the downfall of them. Instead, he's looking better than Kirk Cousins ever did in that offense. Yeah, I think these these two situations are very similar. The difference is the Vikings got more weapons on offense. Now, the quarterback is definitely worse on the Vikings, and we're talking about comparing Darnold to Josh Allen. But the key is both of these teams have great defenses because Brian Flores is doing amazing things with this Vikings defense. He will be a head coach next year. I'm, I'm calling it. But I got to disagree with you, man. Bigger surprise is the Bills because they still don't have – like a go-to alpha on that offense, and they are blowing teams out. Like, who, who is the top dog on this Bills offense? Right, you want to say James Cook? Cool. It might not be him next week or the week after that. And he said it best, I believe it was after the Dolphins game. They were like, hey, like, what's the difference between this year and last year? He's like, look, we know not one person gets to eat every week. Like, every week is going to be a different person. That, that means- sounds like – that sounds like he taking a shot, shot at Stephon Diggs. Diggs. Right. He's like, look, we ain't got people complaining about not getting the ball. But that also shows they don't have a person that talented to command that type of attention where it's like, hey, the ball has to go to me. It's one thing to, to ask for the ball, but the to actually ask for it and people say, like, oh, we going to have to consider doing it means you're talented. They don't really have anybody that's like that. And I'll say this again. Their defense, up there. Shut down two elite offenses. Cardinals week one, my Dolphins on Thursday night football. Say what you want about Sean McDermott, but he might be the best coach in the last 15 years, not named Bill Belichick, that can really develop defensive back play. Because what they are doing with the team's passing attacks is insane. Like, he might not, he might do a lot of things wrong that our network friends are complaining about, but one thing he's going to do, he's going to build up a defensive backfield to play good. Look what he did with Josh Norman early on in his career. So the Bills with no weapons in this defense being this good, like they could win the division. And I did not think they would do that at the beginning of the season. Like I, I didn't even have them as a top two team. So, but but, J, but JT, to your point though, they got Josh Allen still. You knew they were going to have Kincaid. Listen, James Cook was a guy that was up and coming. I mean, they're doing this with Darnold. And but Donald's who, got Justin But who would Jefferson. you have said? We, we but see, listen, we've seen them be successful have, in that Kevin but, O'Connell system with uh, with would, other quarterbacks. We've seen them do would, it. But yeah, but it's still until you see with Darnold and they beat like that's the other thing. They beat the 49ers. I don't care the 49ers didn't have CMC. They beat the 49ers that's, and that's they, a big deal. and they really beat them bad though. And the other thing too is, you know, you're talking about, well, I can see them winning the division. I, I think most people could see them winning the division. Not the Vikings. They had to deal with Detroit and Green Bay. And now we're talking about the Vikings maybe winning the division. I mean, come on. That is way bigger of a surprise through two weeks than, I've than seen, the Bills. I've seen, come on. I've seen this you, from the Vikings. You the just Kevin don't – you, you personally didn't believe in the Bills. That's what it was. It, that's the problem. You just didn't believe in the Bills. Everyone else believes in the Bills. Mm, you didn't even now. have them making the playoffs. All right, next one. I think I know you were going with this because you already kind of admitted it. So the Saints' dominant start or the Jags remaining middle of the pack as the uh, definition of mid, <laughs> not improving, not being competitive. Saints, I mean, Saint, Saints marching in or the Jags staying in <laughs> neutral? Which one is I mean, the bigger surprise? I mean, listen, they're both surprises to me, but the bigger surprise is the Saints' dominant start. I talked about the Cowboys' victory, but listen to this, JT. They have 91 points they've scored. They've only allowed 29. 
the next closest team in terms of points scored is 69 points. They have scored, what, 22 more points than any other team in the league through two games. You know what's That's crazy? a lot through two games. You know what's crazy about that? So I was actually reading the stat the other day that this is like the lowest start of like total team passing touchdowns through like the first two weeks in since like 2018. How many points you said they have? 91. Guess how many touchdown passes have been thrown in the NFL in the first two weeks? 90. 66. Yeah. The Saints the Saints and Rashid Shahid are responsible for boosting the stat up. Imagine <laughs> if they weren't this good. Like, the NFL offenses would be looking terrible right now, stats-wise. But, yeah, I agree with you. It's the Saints. Like, I didn't expect much from the Jacks. This is what they are. It's Trevor Lawrence is just going to do Trevor Lawrence things, not get it done. And nobody's going to say anything about it. That's what he does. But just, just think about the narrative on the Saints before the season. Derek Carr was washed, and he was going to get benched for Spencer Rattler. Dennis Allen was the worst coach in the league, and he was going to be fired by, like, week three. And Alvin Kamara was washed, which some people were saying. Like, none of those things are happening. And on top of that, <laughs> they go in the complete opposite end of the spectrum. They're blowing teams out. Like, Derek, they're playing so good. Derek Carr is out here doing dance moves in the end zone as touchdown celebrations. That's how you know that a team is cooking if Derek Carr is having fun and dancing. So, yeah, the Saints being dominant is definitely a bigger surprise to me. Uh, next one. So we're going to go panic or relax. I'm just going to give you a team or a player. You tell me if we need to panic or relax on them and why. First one, Baltimore Ravens, panic or relax. Whew. Now nah, go ahead. Be biased. Be biased. Because you you know you wear you wearing the gold and the black. You know you want to say panic. So just go ahead and say it. No, I it's a tough one, but I'm gonna say relax because it's John Harbaugh and you know they'll get it right. I mean, they're just like the Steelers. Even if the Steelers started 0 and 2, no one's gonna panic. Like they'll get it right. They've been there before, they'll have the defense, they've got Lamar, they'll they'll be fine. So I'm going to go relax, but not as relaxed as I would have said a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, because I'm just – some of this team's getting older, and I'm not seeing them having fun. Like, has John Harbaugh's voice kind of gotten stale in that locker room? Is he turning into, like, the Pete Carroll? I, like, I don't like, know. Oh, we've heard this shit so many times. I don't know. Like, I don't know. But I'm still going to say relax because it is still the Ravens. They got Lamar. They'll, they'll be okay. They got enough veterans. You know this is my team, not not named the Dolphins. So if mm-hmm. I'm not, if the Dolphins are done, I'm rooting for the Ravens. I'm panicking because I think this team has flown too close to the sun so many times. They're just so used to, oh, yeah, we're just going to turn it on and everything will fall into place. The culture, what we've relied on in the past will just work. This ain't one of them type of teams because there's so many things happening with this team that typically don't happen and they can rely on. Biggest things? Offensive line, they usually always have a great O-line. It is not that good this year, especially that interior, which I think is leading to some of their struggles. Derrick Henry ain't looking like Derrick Henry. I was expecting this guy to come in and rush for 1,300 yards and 20 touchdowns. <laughs> he's, not looking, he, he's not looking like that. You already mentioned and we talked about they didn't look, they're not having fun. Like Lamar is the, like, the biggest person I, I think is not having fun. And then something that I never thought I would see happen is going on, and this could be the sign of the apocalypse. Justin Tucker is missing field goals. Like, that's the best thing they can rely on. That is automatic. If, if all else fails, we know Justin Tucker can boot it from 50 yards in automatic. He missing kicks every week. Like, that's got to be a sign that, yeah, this ain't the same struggles we're used to. So I'm panicking on him. Like, it's just too many things I'm accustomed to not seeing with them happen at the same time where I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, this is worrisome. But – Let's take it down to the guy that's going to get all the blame if this doesn't work out. Lamar Jackson, rated MVP, panic or relax? I'm going to say relax because you look at his first two games. Listen, I don't know what they're doing with the system. I don't know if it's the play calling, the offensive line, but he's still putting up his numbers. 273 in a touchdown against the Chiefs, played clean football. 247 in a touchdown, did have a pick against the Raiders. But he had 122 rushing yards against the Chiefs. Like He's still doing his thing. It's everyone else that's messing up. So in terms of panic, relax on Lamar as the quarterback, on Lamar as the football player, ah, relax. Come on. He's reigning two-time MVP. 
Yeah, even though I said panic on the team, I'm going to say relax on Lamar because we know this is exactly what happens. John Harbaugh and this non-talented team gets him in the jams, and Lamar just says, all right, I'll put us on our back, do what I do best, make shit happen, and I'll and, and, and I'll get it done. So he's he's going to play his game. Like He's still going to be an MVP candidate. He's going to be top rushing quarterback in the league. He's going to put up like 3,500 3, passing yards, maybe 25-plus touchdowns through the air. Like This is what he does. It's whether they'll the rest of the team will hold up their end of the bargain. So I'm going to say relax on Lamar because we've seen him in these situations before. Uh, panic or relax, New York Jets. I'm going to go panic here. I know they're only one and one, and one of those losses was to the 49ers. But you look against a better team like the 49ers, Aaron Rodgers, 13 to 21, 167 yards and in interception. You say, okay, well maybe the run game's going well. Brees Hall, 16 carries, 54 yards, only a 3.4 average. We know the defense gave up 32 points. And then you look at this past weekend when they beat a struggling Titans team and they had to grind out that win. It was not easy. And you look at what Rodgers did, 176 yards and two touchdowns. Brees Hall, only a 4.4 average. Like, I am not feeling confident in this offense. I know it's only two games, but – Maybe they're not feeling like the world beaters everyone tried to tell yeah. us they were. Like, oh, yeah, it's easily their division. They're going to the Super Bowl. Maybe this is what – and listen, they still give up 17 points to a Titans offense that I still don't know who plays on that Titans offense. Like, hey, all I know is Will Levis tried to give him the game. Like, he literally <laughs> threw the ball to him and was like, here, take it. And, and on top of that, I'm just – I'm not seeing – maybe this is what Aaron Rodgers is as – near the end of his career like this is what he's going to do manage the game with 180 yards and a touchdown without throwing a pick like and if that's what and if that's what it is yeah that'll get you 10 wins but come december january playoff time you got to do more than that because you're going to face kansas city you're going to face baltimore you're going to face buffalo you're going to face teams cincinnati maybe that can score like what are you going to do then I mean, I don't know. I am I am panicking on the Jets. Not because of week one, but what they did against the Titans. I would have liked to see them win by two touchdowns. I would have liked to see that offense open it up. He hasn't thrown for more than 176 yards so far. Maybe this is what Aaron Rodgers is in this system. I don't know. Maybe that team is just as bad as they were when there was Zach Wilson. Like, there's just not a lot of talent on that team. <laughs> I agree with you. I am panicking on them. Now, the Aaron Rodgers aspect, I think this is a byproduct of him missing all of last year, probably taking it easy in the preseason, coming off that injury. So him and Garrett Wilson, they'll get that connection going. The thing that's worrying me is, you mentioned it, they got to play all those, those AFC teams that are going to be at the top, the Ravens, the Chiefs, the Bengals, now the Bills. You know what's the problem? Their defense got to stop those guys, and they can't. Like, this defense was supposed to be a top-five lock defense. Sauce Gardner and the boys are supposed to be so good, they're going to be shutting people down. I'm not feeling so peaceful about the Jets' defense, man. It's like Hassan Reddick was trying to tell us something. There's a reason I'm not coming to this dumpster fire unless you pay me what I'm worth. It's because you need me. They have no pass rush. (laughs) And you know what happens when you have no pass rush? It don't matter how good Sauce Gardner and that back end is because they can't cover guys forever. The defense not being able to stop middle to lower tier offenses like the Titans, that worries me because that means the Chiefs are going to cook them. You saw what the 49ers did to them on opening on Monday night. Like, no CMC. Brandon Ayuk basically didn't play, and they ran through him with the undrafted free agent running back. So, yeah, I'm panicking on the Jets because of the defense. The defense ain't living up to lofty preseason expectations. All right. Next one. Now this is this is serious because this 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 hurt. It's hurt a little bit. But more concerning NFL future: Bryce Young, who was just benched by the Panthers, or Will Levis, who we just talked about his struggles with the Titans. Whose NFL future career is more concerning to you? I think it's got to be Bryce Young. I mean, you go number one overall. That team has put a lot of capital in you in two games into the new head coaching regime, who this is a guy that, look what he's this done your, for. This is your boy. Dave this is my guy. He's, 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 he's supposed to be the whisperer. Yeah, look what he did for Baker, and they're continuing that. So as our guy, put it up, as our guy Mike Regina just wrote in, 
Thanks for watching. As always, Bryce Young, not even close. I 100% agree with you, Mike Regina. It's Bryce Young, and it's not even close. I mean, number one draft capital, had a terrible year last year. Because you got to remember, Levis did not play all the games last year quite like Bryce and he Young. actually had a good game last year where people were like, oh, he might be the answer. Right, that for, Will, touchdown for Will Levis. And you bring in all of these supposed weapons. You get another number one uh, first-round receiver in Xavier Leggett. You bring in Deontay Johnson. You draft the running back. Granted, Jonathan Brooks hasn't played yet. But you've got Dave Canales, offensive guy, and you still can't do it. And I understand you played the Saints. But then it's like, you know, now it's two games in. And you're getting benched. So I think that's the problem is even under the new coach, you're getting benched. He doesn't have to. And we're not sure about ownership, right? Tepper, David Tepper, he will do the whatever it takes to win. The so he'll say, see you, Bryce Young. I don't care. We spent a first round pick on you just last year. You're not winning. You are out. He seems to be very temperamental in, in that he's very. Um, he ain't patient. Yeah, exactly. So. I think that's more concerning for sure. Yeah, I, I would say it, it's easily Bryce Young for a few reasons. You you made a lot of good points. The things that stick out to me is this. Let's let's look at the Dave Canales aspect. I don't know who made the decision to bench him, but think about this. Think about how many quarterbacks that have been drafted, like top five, that have been bad throughout their first contract that – got to start for like two or three years. Like Sam Darnold, who was just on the Panthers, comes to mind. Like, how long did Sam Darnold start in New York before they pulled the plug? Same thing with Zach Wilson. Like, these are guys drafted in the same spot as Bryce Young, and they struggled. They weren't good the first, like, two or three years of their careers, but they never were benched this early in their career. So that's that's scary to me. And the other thing is, nobody – you mentioned Dave Tepper being temperamental. Nobody trusts their job security in Carolina. Like – Look at Canales. He's like, look, I got to start winning games or I'm going to be just like uh, your Frank boy, Reich, Frank Reich. Frank Reich. <laughs> they fired him after 11 games. 11 <laughs> games, they fired him. And it's not like this team was like, all right, we're just a quarterback away. You know, we're we're expecting this guy to be the final piece to make us competitive. This was a bottom five roster last year, and they might be worse this year. So the goal was always it was going to take time to build it to be a good team. So the fact that they made Bryce Young – Least this short with that situation that they're in, it's got to be concerning for him. And also, too, we, we know how this goes. Black quarterbacks, they don't get to stick around in the league as long, especially as backups, as white quarterbacks do. Will Levis, I already know it's going to happen. He'll flame out. Somebody will be like, you know what? He's got the arm talent. He's got the size. We can we can bring him in. We can fix him. You know, and he'll he'll be jumping around from team to team. He'll be Andy Dalton. On a team, he'll be, for he'll 10 be a years. journeyman. He'll be yeah, a, journeyman. a journeyman on a team for 10 years. He'll have a few stop gaps here and there where he plays good for two or three games. Like he'll be in the league. Bryce Young might be out of the league if he does not have another team willing to take a chance on him. And that's sad because this is like, think about when he got drafted. Nobody was like, oh, yeah, they should have taken CJ Stroud. They made the wrong decision. It was like, okay, we understand what we've seen from Bryce Young, but also CJ Stroud's very good at number two. The fact that they gave up on him just two games into his second season, that's crazy. And what you said, what they gave up to give him, to get him, like that that makes it even crazier. So, yeah, his NFL future is definitely the most concerning because if he don't find the team willing to take a chance on him and fix him, he's going to be at home. Like he's not going to be in the league. I don't see him making it as a backup. Yeah, and our guy Mike Regina also writes, the offensive line gave up only four pressures on Sunday. This is all Bryce. Um, and David Burns writes, watching from Cedar Hill, Texas. Thank you. Thank you for watching and listening to us. So, JT. Hold on, hold on. Be, 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 before you go, I, I just want to ask one more question. It's I know it's not scripted, but do you think it was the right move for them to bench him? I, I mean, it's tough to say because we're not in the building, right? We're not at practice. But just, but we, just based we don't on know. what we see from the outside and what we know. I, Yes, because I'm a big proponent of young guys getting to sit and watch and learn. And Andy Dalton, as you mentioned, journeyman, he's the ultimate professional. So maybe Bryce can kind of take a breather, sit because they're not a good team either. So they can he can sit, take a breather, get his legs under him as a real NFL player, professional quarterback, 
learn from Andy Dalton, but also that may slow the game down a little bit. And if he does get that next chance, I think he would be better if he's putting in the work leading up to that. Um, so I think for him, I think this is a good move because now he could really kind of learn and process things because not all quarterbacks can jump in there as a rookie like C.J. Stroud did, right? Yeah, it, and it, it, and we, you know me, I'm a big proponent of, of rookie quarterbacks. I don't care if you take them first. I don't care if you take them number 32 at the end of the first round. Like Lamar, like sit them. Let them learn at least for half the season. And if you're 0-8, Maybe put them in, but if you don't have the line to do it, don't put them in and it, get them killed. It is, it is, it's difficult. Like It's not just guys like Bryce Young. Think about all the rookie quarterbacks that got drafted this year. Guess how many of those rookie quarterbacks have thrown a touchdown so far this year? Zero. Like, like, like it's, it's very hard to play this position in the league, but I will say this. I agree with you. I think it's the best move for both parties. Like you said, Bryce gets a reset. He gets to, you know, see the game from the bench and – maybe get his head together, but I think it's good for the Panthers too, because I don't know if you saw Dave Canales' interview when they asked him about this decision. And he said one phrase that let me know that he might've been out on this guy in training camp. He's like, benching him allows us to move forward and play the game the best way schematically. So that means that he felt that Bryce Young, he could not run his offense with that guy on the field. And he's like, yeah, I know Andy Dalton can at least get this done at the minimal level. So he, he's got to be done. For your coach to say that, I'm like, ooh, that's rough. He's like, I can't run my system with you. Yeah. And our guy, Mike Regina, writes in again. And you got to remember, Mike Regina, he's our resident in-house Carolina Panthers expert. He knows more about Carolina Panthers football than I bet you most people in that building, including in their front office, know. So he says, no, keep him out there and lock up the number one pick, putting – Andy in there and winning three games does nothing. Obviously, yes, that may be true, but that's what makes, a, me, think, that's what makes me think Canales is doing but, this for his job because he right. He knows but there's a couple a factors leash. he needs to win, and also listen. You gave up so much for Bryce Young for you to, to for did. you to give up to him. But I'm saying as the organization for you to give up on him 19 games in after that's giving right. up on Frank Reich 11 games in. That's telling everybody everywhere that. We have no patience. We're never willing to develop or build somebody. And we're not willing to build this organization. So why would any free agent ever want to go there? Why would the next number one overall pick want to go there when they can pull an Eli Man? Because that's eventually what it comes down to. That's Carolina, what Shadur would do. Exactly. So at some point, you've got to develop. You have to show as an organization you can develop and have patience. Because if you don't, you're not going to be in this business Nobody's very long. Nobody's going to come like, to that job. Tepper's going to end up having to sell it because it's such a, a circus over there. And exactly, no no big-time free agent, no big-time college player will ever want to come and play. They might say, I'd rather go to the CFL than have to ruin my career I'd and my health. I'd rather go back to the, college and yes, get a ninth-year eligibility exactly. to play for the Panthers. Or make $5 million in NIL money and hopefully you don't get the number one pick the next year. I mean, maybe it's karma because I feel like the Panthers are going to lose these games. You're right. They should have kept Bryce Young to get that number one overall pick just for them to draft Quinn Ewers. Like, is Quinn Ewers going to come in and save his franchise? Like, like, yes, you missed on C.J. Stroud, but a lot of people missed on C.J. Stroud. He turned out to be a generational type player, but also he went to a much better situation. He had an all pro left tackle and Nico Collins there. So, and don't well, forget, not, JT, and don't forget, he had Bobby Slowick yes. like, out the gate as a rookie. You know, not Bryce right. Bryce Young did not have Canales out there. Yeah, Josh so, McCown, who was who was coaching high school the year before. Whoa, whoa, was it? Does it? I mean, you know, high school coaches. I'm not good. taking no shots at nobody, but I mean, oh, <laughs> let me ask you what you think you could fix Bryce Young right now? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> My point exactly.